Hey guys, it's Jen and I have been doing a lot of thinking this season how the year has been super unpredictable and there are so many tempting sales and things going on right now. So I know I have been trying to save money where I can and I know you guys probably are too. You want to spend your money in a helpful way for this season. So I thought it'd be nice to put together a little list of just practical tips to help you save money during this season. If you guys are also interested in saving a little bit of money, I am going to be talking about Ibotta, my sponsor for this video, a little bit later on. So you guys can look forward to that. But for now, let's go ahead and hop into the money saving tips. My first tip is to buy things when you need it versus when you want it. I have to say, I don't necessarily have the greatest track record of keeping up to this. And this is why it's probably my number one tip because I'm constantly being exposed to new products, especially when it comes to like beauty and especially when it comes to skincare, which is kind of ironic because, you know, it takes a long time to see what skincare works or not. My eyes, it's just one of those things where you see something delicious and you always feel hungry. <laughs> That's how I am with skincare. But I have to always tell myself, look for something when you're running out of that product instead of just always having your eyes open and browsing for the products that you don't necessarily need yet. So that helps keep my life a little less cluttered and my wallet a little less skinny. <laughs> the number two tip applies to certain stores, especially the grocery store. It's so helpful to have a list before you buy something and stick to the list. Because when you're thinking about a list, you're really thinking about what you need and what is going to fill a hole in your life right now. But a lot of the times what happens is as we're looking around and browsing for things in the cookie section maybe, <laughs> you come across things that you weren't intending to buy and then you end up spending a lot more than you intended and a lot of times it's for things that you don't actually need. I find that when I have a list and I'm really adamant about sticking to the list, not only does my whole shopping trip end up much, much quicker, which is extra important during this time, I save money without really thinking about it. In fact, I think making a list beforehand actually helps a lot of my decision fatigue, which is something that I, I definitely have such a hard time. Like, oh, there's like five different kinds of macaroni, which macaroni should I buy? But having that list and being like, okay, I want this thing. It just helps me make those decisions in a lot smarter way. Number three is a term that I learned from watching this show called The Home Edit. I don't know if you guys follow them, but they do like organizational videos. Yes, I'm that person that will watch like decluttering things just to feel at peace in my life. If you guys are like that, let me know in the comments. <laughs> One thing that they talk a lot about is backstock. Now backstock is a term that I had never heard before learning it from them, but it's basically your extras in your house. So say that you went to the store and you bought a whole bunch of paper towels. Well, you're only using one roll of paper towels at a time. So the rest of that, that's like prepared for when you need it next is called backstock. I do think backstock is really helpful, especially if you have kids or a big family and it doesn't make sense to run to the store all the time. But I do think it's important to just make sure you're not holding on to too many things that will take you a really, really long time to get through. Like skincare, like I mentioned before, I was realizing that I had way too much back stock of certain moisturizers and toners and what have you. That would take me like a year to get through and then my shelves just ended up being super cluttered. So not that this is a decluttering video, but I do think that it has to do with money as well because what I find is I will spend money to buy things that I like not realizing I already had two of them in my house and so I didn't need to spend that money. So. Beware of backstock. Benny is the most guilty of backstock. <laughs> you know how many jars of peanut butter we have right now? I feel like we, we have four. The we have four family size <laughs> peanut butter jars. Peanut butter man. Number four is one of those really obvious things. Eat out less and cook at home more and not just cooking at home more, but meal prepping. The seasons that I do do more of the meal prepping and cooking at home. And by me, I mean, um, Ben is the cook in our family. 
I can, I can help him out, but he's the one with the actual skills there. But when we cook at home together, it really does end up saving money in the long run. And honestly, I feel like not only is it less money, it's healthier. That's another goal that I want to get back into once we have our kitchen again. Our kitchen is still being renovated, but it's a goal that I have for the future that I'm really, really excited about. Number five, I feel like every dad out there will be so thrilled I mentioned this one, and that is to just generally be conscientious of your home energy use. I feel like everybody's dad is like, hey, make sure you turn the lights off. Make sure you turn the water off. Like just in general, the utilities in our house, because they're always running, sometimes we don't think about how we're excessively using things when we don't need to be. For instance, during the daytime, you can just open up your drapes and have a lot of sunlight versus having the lights on. For a computer situation, one thing that Ben actually told me about He's my husband, so he's the dad in our family. For computers, if you're not actively sitting at your computer, a lot of times I would just put it in sleep mode, but a much more energy efficient way is to completely shut the computer off if I know I'm not gonna be on it for a few hours versus just leaving it on screensaver mode or on sleep mode. It really does make a difference in your energy use. I also wanted to say one of the huge things that we decided to do in this house, but you can really do in any house, is we switched almost every single light that we use to LED bulbs instead of incandescent. And that's because incandescent bulbs, not only do they die really quickly, but they use way more energy. Like our Christmas tree, we intentionally bought a Christmas tree that had LED lights versus incandescent lights because it is something that we enjoy having run all day, but it uses a lot less energy and thus saving money. Okay, so the next one is something that has to do with the clothing that we're wearing and the things that we're seeing. I really love fashion and I get inspired by seeing like fashion bloggers or new things out there. But one thing that I really found made a huge difference in this last year was so much of our stuff was packed away. I literally wasn't exposed to it. I wasn't seeing it. And having these boxes be opened up again, I'm like, wow, it's like I have a brand new wardrobe. One thing that can really help for anybody really is to rotate your wardrobe because you tend to be inspired and wear what you see in front of you, but then sometimes you'll get bored of it, right? You could consider like rotating what is on the closet areas that you see more and some of your clothes will feel fresh again versus having to constantly buy new things. But the same thing can be applied to other things in your life, for instance, kids toys. I know a lot of people, myself included, struggle with just the chaos of having all of the toys everywhere. But one thing that's made our kids really play with their toys more is to have separate bins of different kinds of toys and just not having them all out at the same time. So we'll rotate bins of toys so that they're more likely to be inspired and excited about the toys that they see and it also prevents us from just feeling like we need to buy new toys and then never getting rid of anything else because if they really like it and play with it but just for periods of time I think that's actually really normal behavior for kids and for adults my next tip is to be cautious of sales and I know that is really hard in this season and I'm certainly someone that was always raised on on basically always shopping on clearance to get the best bang for your buck. But at the same time, especially during these seasons where sales are just rampant, it's better to have an idea of what you want before you go into it. And then when that sale happens, it's already that thing that you want versus feeling compelled to buy something because it went on sale that isn't quite exactly what you needed. Especially in today's online shopping culture, it's so easy for there to almost always be a sale going on. You don't always have to shop just because there is a major sale going on. Even sales that I always partake in every year, there are some that I'm like, okay, well this year I'm just deciding I'm not even gonna look. And then at the end of it, I don't feel any sort of like buyer's remorse or feeling of regret that I missed out because I didn't look at what I missed in the first place. So just be choosy about which sales you wanna take part of, 
before the sale happens and then that makes it a lot easier of a decision making process okay so this next tip is something that i've been doing for the last couple of years and i think it really curbs my shopping craving that i'll get into sometimes and that is to do online window shopping and the way that i do that is i'll act like i'm shopping i'll add things to my cart and then at the end of it i'll just let it sit in the cart for a week and then at the end of that week if i have been thinking about it and i really want it i get a little bit of that time where I can process things and really know in my heart and in my gut if it's really something that I want. A lot of times after I wait a week, it gives me enough time to be able to really see if it's something that still sparks joy or if it was something that was just something I wanted because of the excitement of the moment. And you know, sometimes when I'm on the fence enough that I feel compelled to ask somebody about a second opinion on something, that's a little bit of a a red flag for me on if I didn't really love it enough in the first place because if I was super in love with it and I knew in my gut that it just sparks so much joy thank you Marie Kondo I would have just bought it and if it takes another week or another opinion I probably didn't need it and I probably didn't want it as much as I thought. My next point is preventative maintenance. I know it's a little bit more generic than the other points that we talked about before, but it can actually save you from having a really big dip in your financial situation when you didn't expect it. These things might be dental care or cleaning out drainage pipes in a new house, car care. A lot of these things, they can maybe slip our mind or it's just easy to not think about it until it's a problem but what I would say is make a list of those things and then plug those things into a calendar to just check on it regularly that can save you a lot of time and heartache in the long run you don't have to think about it that much if it's already set in your calendar to check it every month or week or year but that just in general can help us stay on top of things without having to use too much brain power over it so point number 10 might apply to quite a lot of you who are sitting at home and thinking about, oh, should I upgrade my refrigerator? There are a lot of things that I need to fix and get better things in our house and now is the perfect time. I would highly recommend checking your local water and electricity companies and seeing if they're running any rebates on things that you're already intending to upgrade in your house because there are a lot of things that I didn't know would actually give you a rebate, like some ceiling fans have rebates and toilets. And then there are the obvious things like refrigerators, dishes, washers, washing machines, things like that. It's always worth looking because it can give you a little something that you didn't know you would get. So speaking of getting a little bit of something back, I am already doing holiday shopping. So one thing that I've been making sure I do all the time as much as possible is using the Ibotta app and browser extension when I'm shopping since I can get cash back on things that I was already going to buy. I also really love that there's no point system or codes that I have to remember for anything. And it's also completely free. And I actually get real cash back. I've just been using it as much as I can, especially for my holiday shopping, buying presents for the kids or for the family, and also doing grocery pickup and delivery. That's kind of a game changer. The browser extension has just also been super handy for me. It's just kind of a one-stop shop. If you guys want to check out Ibotta, I will leave a link in the info box down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed these tips on how to save money, and if you were also raised to be very money saving like me, hit that like button so that I know we're kindred spirits. And feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!